This is Dr. Bill Deagle of a post-show uh, uh, video with Dr. Bill Singh, and uh, we couldn't get that picture up, but we got a little video clip of the smirking face of Dr. Fakey or Dr. Fauci. And I'm, uh, uh, Dr. Fakey. Let's go up here and look at that video clip. This is from, uh, here we go. Uh, yeah, there it is. All right. How do I do video? It says that Dr. Deagle, Bill uh, Deagle cannot see video calls at this time. Uh, no, no, the thing is, I, I will call you in a minute. Well, I'm going to go to a, a, a little commercial break, and then I'm going to actually pull you up on, on okay. Skype. Right. So you give me your Skype address over on break, and then I'll, I'll pop you up on the video okay. screen there. Uh, right uh, now, I want to play the little uh, clip here with Fauci Fakey, I call it. Uh, so we got to... <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 Dr. Fakey, yeah. 1,090 plus individuals. So it is the first truly high-powered randomized placebo-controlled trial it was an international trial involving multiple sites, not only in the United States, but in various countries throughout the world, including Germany, Denmark, Spain, Greece, the UK, etc. The primary endpoint was the time to recovery, namely the ability to be discharged. When you have a study like this, we have a data and safety monitoring board, which looks at the data. And they are independent, so there's no prejudice on the part of the investigators because they're doing the trial or the drug is from a certain company. The Data and Safety Monitoring Board on Monday afternoon contacted me on April 27th, first on Friday the week before, and then again on April 27th, and notified the study team, namely the multiple investigators who are doing the study throughout the world, that the data shows that remdesivir has a clear-cut, significant, positive effect in <coughs> diminishing the time to recovery. This is really quite important for a number of reasons, and I'll give <coughs> you the data. It's highly significant. If you look at the time to recovery being shorter in the remdesivir arm, it was 11 days compared to 15 days. And that's a p-value for the scientists who are listening of 0.001. So that's something that, although a 31% improvement doesn't seem like a knockout 100%, it is a very important proof of concept. Because what it is proven is that this drug can block this virus. And I'll give you an example in a moment of why we think, looking forward, this is very optimistic. The mortality rate trended towards being better in the sense of less deaths in the remdesivir group. 8% versus 11% in the placebo group. It has not yet reached statistical significance, but the data needs to be further analyzed. The reason why we're making Whoa. this now is something that I believe people don't fully appreciate. Whenever you have clear-cut evidence that a drug works, you have an ethical obligation to immediately let the people who are in the placebo group know so that they can have access. And all of the other trials that are taking place now have a new standard of care. So we would have normally waited several days until the data gets further, the dot the I and cross the T, but the data are not gonna change. Some of the numbers may change a little, but the, but the conclusion will not change. Whoa. So uh, when I was looking at this data with our team the other night, it was reminiscent of 34 years ago in 1986 when we were struggling for drugs for HIV and we had nothing and there was a lot of anecdotal reports about things that maybe they were maybe not people were taking different kinds of drugs and we did the first randomized placebo controlled trial with AZT which turned out to give an effect that was modest but that was not the end game because building on that every year after we did better and better we had better drugs of the same type, and we had drugs against different targets. This drug happens to be blocking a enzyme that the virus uses, and that's an RNA polymerase, but there are a lot of other enzymes that the virus uses that are now going to be targets for this. That's all this it does? The standard of care. Yeah. And in fact, when we look at the other trials we did, we were going to do trials Zinc does that. The, uh, uh, uh -huh. antiviral. Actually, it isn't an antiviral, it's an anti-inflammatory, uh, a monoclonal antibody. We're going to now compare the combination of remdesivir with this. So as drugs come in, we're going to see if we can add on that. So bottom line, uh, you're going to be hearing more details about this. This will be submitted to a peer-reviewed journal. 
and will be peer reviewed appropriately. But we think it's really a, a opening the door to the fact that we now have the capability of treating, and I can guarantee you, as more people, more companies, more investigators get involved, it's gonna get better and better. Oh my gosh. That's, biz that's bizarre. Well, now they're trying to hit me with an ad here. That's these little garbage, you know, you get hit with an ad, right? I can't believe it, you know. Uh, and then there's another one here. This is another one, MSNBC. Let's see, this. there's another one. So what, well, here's what I want to say about what he said. So number one, all you need to do is increase intracellular zinc to increase RNA polymerase and in inhibition. Yeah. That's it, okay? So all this drug, and by the way, if it, any viral drug basically has side effects, you can only give it, let's say, in hospital, which means you don't give it just to anybody that tries to order it online, you know, if they can afford it. Because you don't want people taking an antiviral that might cause other side effects you're not aware of. But the amount of improvement in, in fatality is even statistically significant, 8 to 11%, come on. And four days earlier means you, instead of uh, 15 days in, in dire straits, you have 11 days. Oh, come on now. This, this, this drug has minimal effects and they're trying to make it a big deal because you know, it's, it's staying the glory. And then they're going to say, well, we're going to combine it with monoclonal antibodies. Okay, I know about the monoclonal antibodies, right? The, yeah. Yeah, it, and they're already talking about this monoclonal antibody thing, so they're going to combine it with other treatments. Look, they're ultimately going to say, look, we got these antivirals, but in order to really protect the population, we still got to vaccinate you and we got to chip you or put it in your cell phone. So there's three ways of them doing it, just like the Mark of the Beast in the Bible it talks about, right? And you might be familiar with this. They give you a tattoo, which Bill Gates worked on a company that has a tattoo that can tattoo you. They can put a chip that can track by a 5G network. Or they can just put it in your damn cell phone like they do in South Korea or in China or Japan where your cell phone tracks. You don't even need to put it in a person just put it in their cell phone because everybody nowadays with their cell phone is like a cell phone cyborg, right? Yeah. You don't need to stick the chip in them. It's already in their cell phone. It's like no more than two feet away from their body at all times, even when they go to bed at night. Right. So uh, when I hear this comment by Fauci, I'm thinking, he's got a hell of a lot of nerve, hasn't he? And he's and he'll, if the drug does benefit some people or save some lives, he's going to cash in billions of dollars just on remdesivir alone because he's got shares in it. Yeah. Damn it. I don't know. I I I I, I, had, I had to add this little extra video because I thought this is like if this was a, a B movie that I get a script to Hollywood. They said, look, the script is not believable, so nobody's going to believe the thesis behind your your idea here. So I don't want the, the script anymore, but the drug you took when you actually made the script, I want the drug. It's that bad. I mean, it's it's that over the top. These guys are so nervy. The lies they're saying are so over the top, I call them Paul Bunyan lies, that the, what's going on here now is so in your face. Like, the guy that ha owns the patent for remdesivir is in the Communist Party in China. They're on Gilead Sciences board. They're Gilead Sciences and, and, and Gates is the biggest single contributor to the World Health Organization. It's in bed with not only the Communist Chinese, but the U.S. labs and Norwegian labs that are giving me all of these bioweapons. They're creating a super virus. They've arrested uh, Dr. Lieber two months ago for the Thousand Talents program working with the Wuhan lab. And they didn't arrest Dr. Dr. Barrick yet in South Carolina, North Carolina. But my God, man, this is... Without the labs like the Australian lab with the animal lab and these other laboratories and our Western technology, there's no way the Chinese would have had this. And uh, and they're, and they're going to cash in. Now what I'm hearing is that the Chinese are buying out corporations that build stuff in China and they're trying to leapfrog ahead and actually take over because they're trying to open their business. They don't care if it kills 100 million Chinese. Oh, that's good. We get rid of a lot of people we don't need, right? Because eventually the Chinese move want to move to robotic factories anyway. They don't care if there's people, Right. 3D printing and robotic factories in the next five or ten years are going to replace the need for people. No matter what country you're in, right? Oh, God. It's, well, they're getting a bigger, bigger mess. Well, it's all designed. You see, they're anticipating the bigger mess and they want to leapfrog forward. They create the mess, then they want to benefit from it. It's like, this is so bizarre, people think. You're kidding. And if you think Fauci, who should be fired by, you know, by Trump, He's trying to make sure that this says, hey, you can't fire folks. She's, look, he talked about remdesivir, and it's for helping people. I'm thinking, this is minimal help if it's even not statistically significant. And the drug, if they gave it long enough to actually suppress the virus in somebody that's, let's say, a high 
profile health professional working with it. Are they going to take remdesivir for months? I don't think so. No. I don't know what other side effects they have. Well, uh, if they don't have a guarantee, they will have them after, say, 20 days or whatever. I, I, think, it's, I think it's pretty bizarre. <laughs> Look at this. Bill Gates, with the right testing and framework, school should open in September. Dr. Uh, Ahish Jiha, we must uh, gear up for a resurgence of coronavirus in the fall. The uh, Harvard Public Health uh, Dean, with luck, there will be more than one vaccine. Oh my God, man, this is all kinds of bad stuff here. Health of long term uh, facilities uh, crucial to coronavirus fight. Why don't they just lock down that long term facilities? Don't lock down, lock down the economy. Look at this, Dr. Foshi. Uh, inevitable if coronavirus will return next season. Okay, let me put that up. Let this morning, Dr. Anthony Fauci said that he believes it is inevitable that the virus will return this coming fall if it ever goes away at all. So it's not going to disappear from the planet, which means as we get into next season, it might be inevitable that we will have a return of the virus, or maybe it never even went away. When it does, how we handle it will determine our fate. And this afternoon, Fauci said that everyone who needs a test should be able to get one by June. Now, what the hell is the test going to do? Everyone when who needs a test according to the way we're approaching the identification, isolation, contact tracing, keeping the country safe and healthy, that hopefully we should see that. Why is it going to contact tracing when really contract tracing is finding somebody in the first four days when this test can't tell you that? This is just plain lying, and he's got this sneaky look on his face like, believe me, believe me, believe me. I'm thinking, if there's air moving over your vocal cords, you're lying, buddy. Right? There's actually air moving over his vocal cords. Oh, my God. That must be a lie. Ha, ha, ha. Hard to believe. I mean, I, I don't know if I can watch any more of that. I, I'm either going to laugh so hard, I'm going to probably, no, I'm going to develop a, I think I'm going to develop a physical hernia if I watch any more of this. My God. Yeah, anyway, I appreciate you coming back on. I mean, to watch Rochi say this and how wonderful it was, I think, damn it. All right. Okay. And, and if Trump doesn't fire the maniac and they keep on asking me for money, I'm thinking, I no. No, it might happen soon. I have no idea. Well, I'm, if Trump doesn't fire him, basically, especially, how does you know what's going to, I predict it's going to happen? I'll listen to this. I think he may have to keep him until election. No, no, I'll tell you why not. Okay, I'll tell you why. Firstly, if people return in, in these 20 states that are going to reopen and there's no big resurgence, then Fauci is going to be found to be a liar. And Dr. Burks and all these other idiots saying, oh, there's going to be a massive resurgence. Why? And when you say it's going to come back in the fall, that's simply because people don't get vitamin D. They're, they don't have sunlight anymore. Yeah. <laughs> what is any cause of the, the viral resurgence is simply people go inside, which is when you force people indoors with a lockdown, you increase immune incompetence because they don't get sunlight that kills virus or increase vitamin D and immune competence. Yeah. You need to sit in the, in the backyard and... Exactly, or your or your side yard. I have a pool and a nice, beautiful side yard and a view of the valley. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I appreciate you coming back on the program. I'm going to do a little bit of news here before I shut down. Thank you, Doctor Bill. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I, you know, I'm going to get that document printed off and I'll get it signed. Okay. All right. So we're going to go back and do a little bit of news review here. Um, the U.S. news, of course, we have the latest here. What we have here? Oh no, this is this idiot. Governor Gretchen Whitmer sued again over stay-at-home order. Good. So they should sue right out of existence. Grocery stores grossly inflated price of eggs during COVID pandemic lawsuit. Amazon turns to Chinese firm on U.S. Uh, blacklist to meet thermal camera needs. Uh-oh. Illinois governor under scrutiny for releasing COVID uh, mur convicted murders. Wow. You got to release convicted murders? That's not a good idea. Tumbling uh, webcam. Head of Space Force mocks Iran's reconnaissance satellite. Helping victims become challenging uh, as domestic violence calls surge in Orange County. That's just up the road from us. Postal worker killed outside home that had mail blocked. 
Newport uh, Beach City Council votes against the proposal to close the city's beaches. Good idea. Don't close the beaches. People get sunlight and fresh air. Uh, Trump reacts after Politico admits inexcusable error reporting on loans he took. Okay, um, that's that one. Let's look at the next news item. Okay, we have here, of course, a Chinese consul general ex unexpectedly gives speech at the health minister's press conference. Uh, billionaire mining magnate Andrew Forrest. <coughs> yeah, needs to be making money by putting strategic minerals to China. Cruz seeks to block Pentagon from helping uh, movie studios that alter films for China. Good. Stop the movie industry from sucking up to China. Cruz urges development of uh, domestic rare earth supply. Good. Good idea. Beijing on high alert as virus spreads monitors the yeah, northern industry as northern China especially. White House advisors Navarro lashes out at China after fake test kits. Fox are uh, guarding the hen house. China's appointment to UN here writes, yeah, that should be they should be immediately removed. It's ridiculous. Taiwan pushes WHO participation in rare ministerial call with the US. They should be part of it. And the uh, who should actually remove China completely from any kind of partnership. Global opinion starts shifting against Beijing amid pandemic. U.S. imposes new export rules on China. Good. Uh, with no electronic equipment going there, so they can't turn into weapons. Human rights group Beijing must release activists and citizen journalists. Punishers showing virus information. Yeah. Religious suppression under Chinese communism poses global threat. It sure does. A lot of Falun Gong and Christians and, and even the Uyghur Muslims are being persecuted or put to death or organs whipped out of them. Yeah, that's what's going on there. Let's look at the next uh, news item. Politics. Trump reacts after political admits an inexcusable error in reporting on loans. Trump floats sanctuary city reform as possible condition for relief funds to states. Yeah, get rid of the sanctuary cities, which keep uh, illegals here. That's a good idea. Uh, Treasury Secretary, federal government won't bail out mismanaged states. Exactly. That's usually mainly Democratic states. U.S. economy shrank 4.8%. Annual rate first quarter. Biggest drop since Great Recession. Um, that was in 2008. Yahoo a News reporter apologized to Trump for making inaccurate COVID-19 test uh, claim. Uh, Cruz seeks to block a Pentagon from helping movie studios that alter films. Yeah, good. Yeah. So the Pentagon's been uh, <clears throat> been helping uh, movie studios that alter films for China. That's really bad. McConnell next uh, COVID uh, relief bill won't pass the Senate without a liability protection. Hmm, that's interesting. Justin Amash uh, considers running for president as a libertarian. <laughs> that's pretty really funny. This is this guy that's this uh, Democrat, Republican, Rhino Republican. He's just basically a Democratic uh, quest. Uh, Mifum wins special election in Maryland and replaces Elijah Cummings. Biden wins Ohio's mail-in primary delayed by CCP virus. Pence uh, for uh, forgoes mask while meeting. He shouldn't wear not wear a mask because the person is sick. He should have a mask so he won't get the virus. Okay, that's kind of stupid on his part. So that's enough there. I think we are going to close off now and uh, do check out that. Listen to that. Oh, that that clip is just crazy. Listening to Fauci lying. Uh, Trump needs to fire him, or Trump himself is going to run the risk of really losing a lot of his base. Okay, that's the way it is. <laughs>